on the animal nature of man. That is human nature. Our theme scripture is Romans chapter 8, verse number 7. The carnal mind is enmity with God. The carnal mind is not subject hupotasso up under the arrangement of God. And never, and I mean never, can be. We see the world today is crying out for peace between Hamas and the Israelis or the Palestinian and the Israeli. They being ignorant of God does not understand that there would never be no peace in this world. Jesus said, the Prince of Peace said, I come not to bring peace but a sword. That's what he said. I come to set a man at variance with his father. The father gets the son, the mother gets the daughter, Man's enemies shall be they of his own household. We talk about the condition of man and we begin to read. We was talking about the condition of man. And we was reading out our book of conscience on man's condition. And we never did finish it. <clears throat> and then our book of conscience, what we was reading concerning man's condition. We was reading on page, was reading an author pink was reading in Dr. Pink's on a corrupt conscience on page number 20 in our conscience book. So we're dealing with our conscience book and our peace book, our conscience and our peace book. Did you order your book? You didn't get them yet? We're dealing with our conscience book and we're dealing with our peace book, our conscience and our peace. She got this uh, peace. She don't have conscience. We're dealing with our conscience book and we're dealing with our peace book and talking about human reason. Human reason is evil, church. It is. And our conscience, our condition that we are in came about because of Adam eating from the hand of the woman who ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And him eating from her hand, he hearkened to what she told him, which she got from the serpent that was more subtle than any beast of the field. And it was a way in which the serpent was looking for a way to Adam. And the way to Adam was through subtlety. The way to Adam was through subtlety. That's how the serpent, being the picture of Satan, was able, had the ability to get to Adam, and that was through subtlety. That's what we first must have to understand, and understanding human reason, and how the fall of man came about. It was because of the man, it was because of the subtility. That's the first thing the Bible tells us. It was because of the subtility of the serpent. That's the first thing the scripture tells us. That the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. And he, went, he used the woman to get to the man. And it was all through his, his, his disposition, his attitude, his character, which was Subtility. So we was looking at Arthur Pink, a corrupt conscience. And your conscience should be convincing and convicting you of sin. If your conscience is not convicting and convincing you of sin, something is wrong with your conscience. You need to pray to God that your conscience be purged or you have your heart sprinkled from an evil conscience. You should be praying, Lord, in the name of Jesus, sprinkle my heart from an evil conscience. Purge my conscience with the blood because if you're not being convinced and convicted of sin, something is wrong with your conscience. Your conscience is still corrupt because you sin every day. 
Your conscience should be seeing with God. Conscience is the word sum innocence. That's what it is. It's sum innocence. That's the word conscience. Sum, sum innocence. And that means to see with God. That's where we get our word ghetto from. And then we get the word sum, which means in fellowship. In fellow, in fellowship, in a company. In a company with in a company with and the conscience works for God that's who the, that's that's what the conscience does you see it's a con and science con and science science is nothing but knowledge that's knowledge and the prefix con means with and that's knowledge with God but in order for you to have knowledge with God, in order for you to have knowledge with God, you got to know the rules and you got to know law. That's the only way you can have knowledge with God. And we're going to be talking, we talked about this in detail on Sunday, but tonight we're going to be looking at uh, what Mr. Pink has to say about conscience, because the world keeps praying and for peace to be between the Palestinians and the Israelis. And we see in the world today that the world is against the Jew. Majority of the world is against the Jew. And the reason the world is against the Jew, we here at the Narrow Hodos Ministry know why. And that is because of their rejection of the Messiah. He came to his own and his own received him not. His own was the tribe of Judah. His own was Benjamin and Judah. Judah. When Christ said he came to his own, and his own received him not. His own was Benjamin, was Judah, was Judah, was Judah, and Benjamin. And Ben, Benja, Benja, Benjamin. That was his own. This is what we get Jew from. This is what we get Jew from. That's what we get the word Jew from. We don't get the word Jew from Israel. We do not get the word Jew out of Israel. Israel was Jacob. And I keep telling people this. And I keep saying that Jacob was not a Jew. Amen. Jacob did not come out of Judah. Judah is fourth son of Jacob. If he's the fourth son of Jacob, and he is, he cannot be a Jew because Judah is his son. His name was Israel. God changed. His name was Jacob. And God changed his name from Jacob to Israel. Israel is a spiritual name, church. This name came from God. His name, this name came from God, Israel. And Israel means a prince that has power with God and man and hath prevailed. Israel is the only one that has faith. Israel will overcome the world because it's a prince that has power. It has power. And that power that he has is the power from God the power we have is power from, power from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us power. The Holy Spirit gives us power. That's why we're studying on the Spirit. We can, we're doing the Spirit and conscience. We are, I'm putting all this together, you should be seeing. The Holy Spirit is what works in the conscience and causes the conscience to see with God once it's purged with the blood of Jesus Christ. Abraham was not a Jew. Isaac was not a Jew. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was not a Jew. He didn't come to his own. When the Bible say he came to his own, and his own received him not, he's talking about the lineage of Judah. Because the ten northern tribes of Israel were scattered abroad. 
You only had a portion of Israel left, and that was up in Galilee. That's what Peter was. They don't tell us what tribe Peter was of. Turn your Bible to the book of Matthew. It don't tell us what tribe these Galileans were from. All it tells us is, is in uh, Genesis chapter 3, Genesis chapter 4, verse number 12. Genesis chapter 4, verse number 12. All it tells us is, also, all it tells us is that Jesus, that Jesus, that Jesus was born in Galilee. Go to, go, as a matter of fact, let's go to uh, chapter 2 first. In Let's go to, yes, yes, we're in Matthew. Let's go to chapter 2 first. Amen. Let's go to chapter 2 first. What I say? Let's go to chapter 2 first. Okay, let's go to chapter 2 first. Amen. When we go to chapter 2 first, we see that Jesus, that uh, Mary and Joseph, that Joseph and Mary had to flee to Egypt because Herod was seeking to kill the young child and that after he comes out of Egypt in uh, verse number 19 in chapter 2 it tells us when Herod was dead behold an angel of the Lord appeared into, in a dream to Joseph in Egypt saying arise take the young child and his mother going to the land of Israel, for they are dead which sought the young child's life. And he arose and took the young child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. But when he had heard that Archelaus Ar Ar did reign in Judea, in Judea, in the place of his father Herod, Joseph was afraid to go there. Notwithstanding, being warned of God in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee. And he came and he dwelt in a city called Nazareth in Galilee, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Where's Jesus at? He's in Nazareth of Galilee. And say, repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Who is he telling to repent? The Jews. Because he's in the wilderness of Judea. You following the law and you paying attention. Mama Rhonda, you're writing. There you go. In those days came, I'm at verse number one. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Who was he talking to? He talking to the Jew. He's in the wilderness of Judea. But this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one, that's John the Baptist, crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Saying John had his raiment of camel's hair, a lurth and girdle about his loins, his meat was locust and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem, not Nazareth of Galilee. Jesus is in Nazareth of Galilee. The Jews van in Jerusalem and Judea van. That's where you get your Jew from. Jerusalem, Jew, Jerusalem, and Judea. That's why they call them Jews, Rose. Jerusalem and Judea. Paul was not a Jew. Paul was, a, was, a, Paul was of the lineage of Benjamin. When they practiced, what did I just say? And learned the traditions of the fathers, they called that Judaism. <coughs> Judaism is a doctrine. That's what Judah, Judy is a male. It's a doctrine. That's what it is. Judaism. 
Judaism is not from God. J-U-D-A-I-S-M. That is human reason. That's human reason. That's what that is. That's human reason. That is carnal mind. That's carnal mind. That is enmity. Enmity against God. Judah, Judaism is oral, oral law. That's oral law that they said that God gave to Moses besides the written law. That's oral law, which, which I'm going to put it up here, man, and we don't understand which they, Melvion, say. They say. That's why Jesus kept telling us in the book, in the fifth chapter, when he gave his sermon on the mount, he keeps saying, you have heard that it have been said by them. That is human reason. When you read, every time we read, you have heard that it have been said by them. That's human reason. You have heard that it have been said by them. He's talking about the forefathers. What he's saying is, I never said anything like that. When he says said by them, he's talking about the oral law. As a matter of fact, let's look at it. Let's look at it. Yeah. Let's look at it. Let's look at it. Let's go to uh, chapter 5. Yeah. Let's go to chapter 5. Let's go to chapter 5. We have chapter 5. He gives his sermon on the mount. After he gives his sermon on the mount, there is no Jews here, Rose. There is no Jews there at the sermon on the mount because John the Baptist, John the Baptist, ran them off. So we get to verse number twenty-one, Rose. He said, "You have heard that it was said by them of whole time." That's human reason. We get to verse number twenty-seven. You have heard that it was said by them of old time. That's human reason. You get to verse 31. It had been said. That's human reason. That is not the word of God. Jesus is telling us what the rabbis in Judaism with the oral law, that's what that is saying. That's Judaism. That's carnal mind. That's human reason. That's enmity against God. Every time you see, you have heard that it was said by them of old time. That is human reason. He began to say it. He's calling them out. That's what Jesus is doing. What he is doing is calling them liars. He said they lie. That's what Jesus is saying. He said they lie. He started talking about them lying in verse number 21, in verse 21, he said, you have heard, they taught you this, that it was said by them of old time. God didn't speak by them of old time. When God spoke against them, what they did was kill the prophets. Mm -hmm. When God spoke against them, what they did the Jew, and I mean the Jew. I'm not talking about Israel. I'm not talking about 10 northern tribes. Understand who I'm speaking about. I'm speaking about the Jew in Jerusalem out of the tribe of Judah and Benjamin. Also, the Levites. That's who I'm speaking about. Those are the ones that crucified Christ. They persuaded the people to agree with them. The scripture tells us that. But in understanding, I want you to understand what's going on today. What's going on today has to do exactly with what we're reading in Matthew chapter 5 and what I'm teaching on on Thursday night. Human reason, carnal mind. What people say don't mean nothing. They say that there's, they say, when they say 
peace, and safety. What are they saying? Sudden destruction. Sudden destruction. When they say, and this is the problem we are having, J.D., and not understanding, because we have believed, Melvin Yard, what they say. They don't have a covenant with God anymore. That covenant they break. They don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah, sitting on the right-hand side of the Father. They are waiting for a Messiah to come. So they don't believe in the new will and testament. They don't believe in the new covenant. They don't believe in the new testimony. They don't believe in the new diatheke. The new diatheke, the new will. The new covenant, diatheke, that's the word testament, the diatheke. They don't believe in the new contract that God has made with all mankind. And when I say all mankind, that means portion, portion of the Jews and portion of the Gentiles. You put them together, you get a quote whole. You give a half of the Gentile, you get half of the Jew, you bring two halves together. Talk back with me. You get a whole Israel. They don't believe in the new diatheke, the new contract, the new will and testimony that God established with, quote, the elect. The elect consists of Jew and Gentile. The Jew today, Netanyahu, and the Jew with the yarmulke on his head, those who are being attacked all over the world today, they don't believe that Jesus was their Messiah. So what is going on with them is because of their rejection of Jesus the Messiah. The same is happening with the ten northern tribes of Israel that is scattered abroad which we believe and I teach is the black man. They were separated and those Jews they call themselves Jews. They are Ashkenaz, Sephardic, S-E-P-H-A-R-D-I-C, Sephardic Jews. They adopted the ways and the customs of the original Jews. They were called Khazaria Jews. Then you got your black Judaism. They call themselves, those must be the northern tribes of Israel. They call themselves Hebrew Israelites. So both of them are wrong. Both of them are under the curse of God because they reject the Messiah, the Redeemer, the Prince of Peace that has already, already come. They don't see him like we see him, the never hold those ministry. We see him as God manifest in the flesh. He is the express image Amen. of God. Amen. They don't see him like that. They see him just as a man and some as a prophet. Now, the Jew today believe he is the Jew in that land. I believe that is a that was a political move that God permitted, sovereignty of God. God had to let it happen. But it was a political move to get them back in that land. That's all politics. Because it came through political man. They call it some call it colonial, colonial uh, Americanism. But I know that they are a democratic state. That's what they say. I heard them say it. I heard the prime minister say it on CNN the other day. She said we are democratic. Democratic means the people rule if you don't know what democratic means. Now, now, when we read, this is what you guys got to understand. Look at verse 20. It said, For I say unto you, except your righteousness, I mean, 520, I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. And so the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees was sought by works of the law. When I say works of the law, we're talking about Judaism. 
we're talking about the oral law. And that's the law that the scribes and the Pharisees had. The law that the scribes and the Pharisees had was called oral law or Judaism. It was out of human reason. It was an explanation, like I'm teaching, it was an explanation and interpretation put on top of the explanation and interpretation that the Spirit had given to the law. Because the law was spiritual, if you don't understand it, know that. The law is not physical, the law is spiritual. The law is spiritual, that's what Paul tells us so in Romans chapter 7. Verse 14. But they put an external, external interpretation and explanation on top of the law. They call it Halakha, Mishnah, Talmud. You got your Jerusalem Talmud, your Babylonian Talmud, you got your Mishnah, you got your Gemara, which is a commentary. All of these different books that they came up with on, on the Ten Commandments for the 613 laws that God gave to Israel. Now, today, now means right now. Now today, they are still practicing what the scribes and the Pharisees were taught from the fathers. That's where we get to verse number 21. It says, you have heard that it was said by them of old time. You can go to verse number 19, Van. It said, whosoever, oh yeah, verse 19, Van. It said, whosoever, at verse number 17, Van. It says, think not I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. They exclude the prophets. All they got is the law, which is the oral law. When Jesus talking about the law, he's talking about the law of Moses. And he's talking about the prophets that prophesied against them for breaking the law that he gave. I said the law that he gave. Jesus, I said the law that he gave, for he was not manifest in the flesh yet. The law he gave Moses on Mount Sinai. Two tables of stone written with the finger of God on the front and the back, the law of God. That's what he's talking about. He's talking about the two tables of stone written with his finger. That's the law in verse number 19. Because if he destroyed the law, who? I said who? If he destroyed the law, who do he destroy? I said if he destroyed the law, the law, who do he destroy? He destroys, who do he destroy if he destroys the law? He destroys himself. Many of you don't be understanding what I'm asking. Again, let me make this statement to why I'm here. When I ask you questions in your exhortation, look for the words in your exhortation. What did I say? When I ask you questions in your exhortation, look for the words in your exhortation. Do not go outside your exhortation. Amen. Mm -hmm. If I ask you, because many of these people have been struggling for the last two weeks, and I said this before, especially to the women. I stood up with the women, and I did a thorough teaching after the Bible study. And many of you women are straying away from what I taught you. When I ask you a question, if I ask you a question concerning baptism, you look in your exhortation, you locate the word baptism and you answer your question accordingly in harmony with what is spoken of around the word many of you act like you, you, you don't understand no more Amen. I ask you a question 
in, in concerning your exhortation. Look for the words where at? In your act, that means you got to go back and read it. Amen. If I read it, I read it line for line. I keep telling you this. I read like this. Low third grade literacy is warning for future learning. So I say, what is warning for future learning? That means you got to go back and read. You got to tell me third grade literacy. Fruit, Illinois, third grade students can read. I say, who can read? Fruit, Illinois, third grade students. Every fruit, even fruer, lower income, and minority students are at a grade level in reading. I said, where are, where is minority students? You go back, find minority students, and you write at grade level in reading. Do everybody understand? Yes. All right. Go back into your exhortation. Read your exhortation. Locate the words in your exhortation and answer accordingly. Yeah. Everybody got to understand? Amen. Yeah. We got to understand. I'm going to ask you the question according and harmony with your exhortation. Everybody got to understand. Yes. Right. So go, go back because you got to go back and read. See, well, I know what you're going to do. You don't want to go back and read your exhortation. See? Because I know what that... When you send me the answers to your exhortation, I do not even have to go back and read your exhortation to see if the answer is right or not. Mm-hmm. Because I remember what your exhortation says. And when I say I remember, remember, I remember. So when I'm reading your exhortation, so everybody can understand how I do this. I'm reading your exhortation. It says, just over one-fourth of all third-grade students in Illinois can read. I stop and I go, who can read in the state of Illinois? And then I go back and I pick up and start reading there. Then I get down here and they say, for low income and minority students, reading proficiency is even worse. I said, where is reading even worse at? That you got to go back and read. And then I stop there. Then I go, a student's academic success as defined by high school. I say, who defines a school, uh, uh, who defines a student's academic success? High school. high school. That's how I read. So you can understand, this is how I read. Then I go, high school graduation can be predicted with reasonable accuracy. Boy, I say, I got them now. I said, how can the high school graduating students' academic success be evaluated? Uh-oh, they y'all lost it. <laughs> ah! They go, look at it, look at it. They lost it. Yeah. <laughs> it can be predicted with reasonable accuracy, accuracy by knowing. See y'all be lost. That's why I see I'm because you know what I'm doing? I'm teaching you how. Talk back with me. Mm -hmm. Teach you how to read. Mm -hmm. I didn't say you could not read. Mm -hmm. I did not say that. Many people misunderstand what I be saying, Melvin. I didn't say you can't read. I said I'm teaching you how to read. You can read, but you don't know how. Because you gotta go back and look for your answer. Now, Jesus said in verse number 17, Rose, think not that I have come to destroy the law. You got to know what law he's talking about. Now, listen, listen, listen. When Jesus said, Rose, think not that I have come to destroy the law. Did those people think of 
the law of Moses. No, no they did not. Because all of their lives they had been taught Judaism. All their lives they had been taught oral law. How do we know they were taught oral law? How do we know they were taught oral law? Because Jesus said in verse 21, you have heard that it was said by them of long ago. That's how we know they was taught oral law. How do we know it was taught oral law? How do you know it was, they was teaching oral law, preacher? How do you know that was not the law, law of Moses? Because in 21, he said, you have heard that it was said by them. Stop. You have heard that it had been said by them. Them did not give the law. Only him gave the law. And what was his name? I said, them did not give the law. Y'all lost. I said, them did not give the law. Only him gave the law. And what was his name? Moses. 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 See, that's what I'm saying. See, that's what I'm saying. I said, them did not give the law. It was not them that gave the law. It was him that gave the law. And his name was Moses. Mm -hmm. Them did not give a law. Them did not give a law. It was one person that gave them the law, and his name was Moses. Yep. And that's why they called it the law of Moses. You best believe Excuse me, you best believe it. And so this is why I teach you how to read. He says, so you have heard that it was said by them. He said that was their human reason. That was a carnal mind that was enmity against me. He said, I didn't come to destroy the law that I gave, because if I come to destroy the law that I gave, I come to destroy myself. If I come to destroy what the, the, the interpretation and explanation and the rebuke that I gave the prophets, I come to speak against myself. Because the Lord sent the prophets. That's who sent the prophets. They did not come on their own. And they killed the prophets. The Jew today is paying for the sins of his forefathers in killing the prophets. Because Jesus said that the wrath of God was coming upon them from Abel to Zechariah. And it is. It's coming upon him, coming upon them right now. And there will not be no peace to them at all as long as this earth exists. There will not be no peace. Now, we back at 17. He said, think not that I have come to destroy the law. You got to know what law he's talking about. It's about the law of Moses. And he said, I did not come to destroy the prophets. And that's the prophecy that I gave to the prophets. I am not come to destroy Destroy what? The law and the prophets. You stay in this context of what he says. I come to fulfill the law and the prophets. Turn your Bible to Luke chapter 24. Turn your Bible to Luke chapter 24, Rose. Let's go to Luke chapter 24. Let's go to Luke chapter 24. When we get to Luke chapter 24, when we get to Luke chapter 24, he, he, he shows himself to the two men on the road to Emos, and he's speaking to them, and we get to verse number 36. It says, and as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them. He's talking about to the eleven. Well, let's go to 33 so you can understand he he's talking about the eleven. It says, uh, yeah. it says, uh, well, then let's go to verse number, oh, Lord, have mercy. Let's go to verse number one. Let's go to verse, I mean verse number 13. Let's go to verse number 13. We had Luke 24, 13. Give you a good history lesson today so you can know what's going on. Because we don't know the story. This is what the problem is, man, for y'all, mankind, the preacher in the pulpit don't know the story. He said, and behold, two of them, this is after his crucifixion, he has risen from the dead. He said, and behold, two of them went the same day to a village called Ebus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score four loans. They talked together of all these things which had happened. What did they not have? They did not have nobody to guide them. They were just talking about the crucifixion, what had happened. He said they talked together of all the things which had happened. Came to pass while they communed together and reasoned. It said Jesus himself drew near and went with them. He said but their eyes were 
hold it. That means they could not recognize them. God held back the recognition of their eyes for recognizing in appearance who Jesus was that they should not know or recognize him, J.D. And he said unto them, what manner of communications are these that you have one to another as ye walk and you are sad? And the one of them whose name was Cleopas answered and said unto him, are you only, are you only, are you only, are you only, you the only one that don't know? You the only one? Are you only a stranger in Jerusalem and has not known the things which are come to pass in Jerusalem in these days? And he said unto them, tell me what things have come to pass. They said unto him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty in deed and word in the presence of God, and all the people. How the chief priests and our rulers delivered him. They even said, they even know that the Jew crucified Christ. It did not say the Romans. He said the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to the Romans to be condemned to death and have crucified him. Because they had no jurisdiction. They had no authority to put a man to death. Hello? Uh -huh. They say we trust that it had been he. Talk, now listen, y'all. This is it. We trust that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. Brought ten northern tribes back. It said Israel. It didn't say Jew. It said Israel. They should have redeemed Israel. You hold your place right there. And all you got to do is flip over to Acts the first chapter. All you got to do is flip over to Acts the first chapter. You go to Acts the first chapter. And when you get to Acts the first chapter, you look at verse number six. At verse number six, it says, When they were, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, talking about the eleven, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? So we go back over to Luke chapter 24. We look at verse number 21 again, and this is what they was talking about. Even the 11 was looking for the 10 northern tribes to come back because Judah and Benjamin is in Jerusalem. So they want to know when you're going to bring back northern Israel, Ephraim, the ten northern tribes. Are you going to restore them? Are you going to redeem them? Because they're looking for Ephraim or Israel to come back so they can have a literal, physical army deliverance to raise up and go against the nations of the world. We all want to call That is what they're waiting for today. They think that's going to happen today. They think Christ's going to come back, set up a kingdom, and an army in Jerusalem. And then he's going to go forth to conquer the world. That's what they think today. That's what they believe. That's what some Baptists believe. That's what some Methodists believe. That's what most denominations believe. We don't believe that the Bible doesn't teach you. So we back in Luke 24 and 21, it said, We trusted that it had been he who should have redeemed Israel. And besides all this, he said that he was going to resurrect the third day. Today is the third day since these things were done. And yes, and certain women also of our fellowship made us astonish, which, which were early at the supper. And when they found not his body, the certain women, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels which said that he was alive. Certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the women had said, but him they saw not. Then he said to them, O fools and slow of heart, 
all that the prophets have spoken. Back in verse 17 in Matthew chapter 5. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophet. So we back there and see you guys forget. I don't forget. That's why you guys forget. Y'all be writing and everything. I, I, I try not to talk about it, but y'all forget. Because y'all writing and all this other stuff going to your mind instead of paying attention to the voice. Then he said to them, O fools, it's so hard to believe all that the prophets have spoken. What did he just say? What did he just say? I have fulfilled what the prophets spoke. That's what he said. But you don't see that there. Because you don't remember or know 517. I do. So when I say over here, he's saying that he fulfilled what the prophet spoken. That's what he said in the beginning of his ministry. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am come not to destroy the law or what the prophets prophesied. But I come to fulfill what the law says and I come to fulfill what the prophets prophesied. He gets over here and he tells two. He tells them, watch out, J.D., he witnesses to them. Watch out, J.D., he witnesses to them before he witnesses to the eleven. And he witnesses to them and he says, O oh, fools, slow of heart to believe, all oh, that the prophets, he didn't say nothing about the law, all oh, that the prophets have spoken, ought not Christ to have suffered these things? Who said that? The prophets. The law didn't say that. The prophet said that. Mm -hmm. And to enter into his glory, especially Isaiah said. Mm -hmm. And then here we go. And beginning at the law. No. Nope. And beginning at the law. Mm -hmm. And beginning at the law. Beginning at the law is beginning at what, J.D.? Moses. It's beginning at Moses. Mm -hmm. And beginning at the law. of the prophets. There you go. There you go Matthew 5, 17 right there. And beginning at the law, and beginning at Moses, and all the prophets, that's exactly the order he said in the 5, 17. Think not that I have come to destroy the law of Moses, and the prophets which they prophesied. That's what he said in Matthew 5, 17. That's exactly what he said in uh, Luke 24, 27. Talk back with him. Amen. He ain't talking about no Judaism. He said, in beginning at the at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded. That means explain and interpret it. He pounded it out unto them. And uh oh. He included the scriptures. He included the scriptures. So he went to the law of Moses. He went to what the prophet says and the scripture, the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh to the village, whether they went and, and made as though, and he made as though he would have gone further. They constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening. It's getting dark, and the day is far spent. And he went in and tarried with them. Came to pass as he said and meet with them. He took bread and he blessed the bread. He break the bread and he gave it to them. Fellowship. He gave them the word of life. When he gave them the word of life, Rose, their eyes was open. <coughs> and they knew him. What opened your eyes is the word of God, Rose, when Jesus administered. When the Holy Spirit administers the Word of God to you, that's what will open your eyes so you can see Him in the Word. And He vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while He talked with us by the way? And while He opened to us the Scripture. And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven. He witnessed to those two before He witnessed to the eleven. And found the eleven together, and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed, and hath appeared to Simon. 
and they told what things were done and the way how he, he, he was known of them in breaking of bread. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a ghost. And he said unto them, Why are ye troubled? Why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself, handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as you see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed not for joy and wonder, he said unto them, Have you here any food? And they gave him a piece of raw fish and from and of a honeycomb. He took it, he did eat before them, and said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was still with you. That all things must be fulfilled. Back at Matthew 5, 17 again. Which were written in the law of Moses, <coughs> the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding. That they might understand the scriptures. Praise God for Jesus. Amen. We go back over to 517. It says, think not that I am come to destroy the law of Moses and the prophecy of the prophets. I come not to destroy the law of Moses and the prophecy of the prophets, but I come to fulfill the law of Moses, the prophecy of the prophets, and the things in the Psalms that was written concerning me. That ain't there, preacher! Okay. When you get through. <laughs> now, when we get to when we get to 518, when he say, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot and one tittle shall not in wise pass from the law. What law? The law of Moses. Till all the law of Moses be fulfilled. Whosoever shall teach. Who, who, therefore, whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments in the law of Moses, which the Jew do, and shall teach men, which the Jew did, Judaism, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. And I teach the law. That's what I teach. Then he said, For I say unto you, that except your righteousness, shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. You shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said by them of old time. That's Judaism. Now he's going to rip their oral law to shreds. Then he goes and he talks about how to give your gift. You get, he tells you to agree with your every every quickly you go through this. But our point is, we see it why the wrath of God is upon the Jews? What do you got in your hands, son? What is that you got? What you got? Put that down. What you holding that for? Why do you put? Why are you doing that? Charles, put that over there. Move that. What is you doing? Why are you gonna sit it in your lap? What is you doing? Verse twenty-seven. It's supposed to be following on in your Bible. Don't let him pick that up no more, Charles. You have heard that it was said by them of old time. He keeps saying them of old time. J.D., he keeps saying it. That's the oral law. That's tr tradition. That's your Mishnah. You get down here, verse 31, Rose, he said again. He said, it has been said, Rose. That is human reason. You get to 33 rules, again, you have heard that it had been said by them of old time. That's the Judaism, man. That is the Halakha, that's the Talmud, that's the Mishnah, that's the Gemara, that's the Jerusalem Talmud, the Babylonian Talmud. And it's the Halakha, it's the sayings of the fathers. What is this, uh, Mammonides, I can't think of his book that I got. The guy came here, he came here, he gave me a book, uh, the learner, the perplexed, or something like that. 
all these books they wrote, by the grace of God, he has allowed them to come into my possession. You have heard of that verse 43, Rose. You have heard that it had been said. He keeps saying it, Rose. And that's, and that's the last time he said it, Rose. You have heard that it had been said. That's what he said, Rose. So, what we're under, what we're under, what, what I'm explaining to you today is Judaism, is Judah and Jew, that's his own he came to, and they did not receive it. Now, you go to, you go back to Matthew, you go back to Matthew 3. You go back to Matthew 3. This is how you would have to explain it to a Jew too. But what that you know what that Jew going to do? When you start talking to that Jew about Jesus, you know what he's going to do? No, preacher, what he's going to do? He's going to say, my rabbi said. That's what he's going to say. My father said. My rabbi said. That's what he's going to do. He's going to say, my rabbi said. Let me see, can I pull this up? Come on up here, Charles, and try to work with me on this. Oh, man, my phone is going dead. Man, I might not be able to do it. Man, my phone is going dead. And I didn't charge it. It may take. It may take. No, nope, I don't think so. It may take. Yeah, what a charge. I ain't got no cord up here. What do you say? Somebody got a little charge. No, I don't. I ain't, I ain't got no, no way to plug. Mm -hmm. I don't know where to plug it. I don't know where to plug it. I'm going to plug it at. Huh? You know, some of our batteries are mobile. What? Like a mobile battery. Some of them are like that. Some of them are men. Well, I'm going to look right there. Let me see, can I bring this up? Huh? Put it right there. It's got the bouquet. All right. Let me see, can I find this? I'm going to try to hear what this one. Oh, yeah, I got it. Come out. Where's it at? I'm going to plug it at. Right there. Gonna charge it. Turn the TV on, Charles. Let me get this on. Come over here and turn, turn this on. No, I can't plug it. Yeah, I can. Come on over here. I'm, I'm too old to be bending down like this. You get down there. No, I'm so yeah, all right. <laughs> I'm 10 years old. You got it? You need to move this? Yeah. Right. Keep laughing at it, y'all. Don't be laughing at somebody. All right. Let me see if I get this on. Now. Uh, what do I do? I go to, uh, I go to what? Jeremiah. I be forget. What are you trying to do? I'm trying to go to video. I'm trying to show this video. All right. Oh, there we go. Go ahead. Get it up. Get it, get it, son. There you go. There you go, son. Do it. Do your thing. All right. He got it. All right. This is what I want y'all to see. This is what y'all want y'all to see. Praise God. All right. All right, y'all ready? Yes. Here we go. We're booking the worst in a while. Uh, something redemptive in the midst of all this really tragedy and chaos. It was very redemptive, I thought. Uh, it really, um, like you said, it was the global day of prayer for, for the missing and the hostages. And uh, the two chief rabbis of Israel, Sparnik and... Uh, what did they say? Shh. Come on, man. You gotta be quiet, y'all. The what, y'all? Thank you very much. Oh, uh, something redemptive in the midst of all this really tragedy and chaos. He says something redemptive in the midst of all this chaos. He used the word redemptive. He said this was a redemptive act. So they don't believe that Jesus is the redeemer. Redemption has already come to pass. They are looking for redemption. So they call the day of prayer that they had in Jerusalem a redemptive act. Do we understand? Yes, yes. Keeping the worst in a while. Uh, something redemptive in the midst of all this really tragedy and chaos. It was very redemptive, I thought. You see what she said? They don't believe that Jesus.
Jesus is the Redeemer. We read that in our uh, Jesus of the Messiah by Adam Edersheim. This is what I'm telling y'all. They say this was very redemptive. We have already been redeemed. We've been redeemed with the blood of Jesus Christ. They do not believe that Jesus was the Messiah. This is what I'm explaining to y'all tonight. This is why the wrath of God has come upon them to the uttermost. It really, um, like you said, in the midst of all this really it, tragedy and chaos. It was very redemptive, I thought. Uh, it really, um, like you said, it was the global day of prayer for, for them. What did they call it? The global day of prayer. What did Jesus say? I pray not for the world. They say they had a global, that's a global, a global day of prayer. What did Jesus say? I pray not for the world. That's what he said in John 17. Verse number 9. I don't pray for the ungodly mass. Those that's alienated from God and hostile to my cause. I don't pray for them. I don't pray for the reprobate, the one that rejected me. That's what he's saying. Amen. That's what he's saying. Say, I don't pray for them. Really tragedy and chaos. It was very redemptive, I thought. Uh, it really, um, like you said, it was the global day of prayer for, for the missing and the hostages. And uh, the two chief rabbis of Israel, Sephardic and Ashkenazi, were both... The Did you hear that? The two chief rabbis of Israel, Ashkenaz and Sephardic. I told you, I know what I'm talking about. They do not believe that Jesus is the Messiah. Do you, do you think this is a coincidence God allows me to see this? Do you think it's a coincidence? It's called the sovereignty of God. It's called the sovereignty of God. That's what I teach. That's what we believe. We believe everything that happens is the sovereignty and the providence of God he is orchestrating everything. Some believe it, some don't. Mm -hmm. Some don't believe everything. I believe everything. With very honest, I believe I was ordained by God. Amen. God, Charles stand up there with his hand. I believe everything. I believe everything. That boy stop crying, get him out of here, take him in the back so they can hit him. I believe everything. I believe everything. Amen. Many of y'all don't believe everything. I believe everything. That boy sitting there, he, he got caught with that candy, sticking it in his lap. He put it up under the table. God showed me how sneaky and low down he was. I believe God showed me that. Amen. He don't. I believe everything. Amen. Oh, well, well, well. Many don't believe that, J.D. I believe everything. Amen. <clears throat> My like, he, um, like he said, it was the glory. Believe my counsel was given to me and ordained by God. I believe that. Amen. I believe everything. Amen. I believe everything. Yeah. Right? Overlooking the worst in a while. Uh, something redemptive in the midst of all this really it, tragic. Ain't nothing redemptive in that. Turn your Bible to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 31. Amen. Go to, turn your Bible to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 31. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 31. Laugh for joy, J.D. Read for me when you get there. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 31. What do it say, J.D.? It's actually verse number 30. Th verse number 30. Read what it say. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom, and righteousness, in and God. sanctification, and redemption. Now what redemption act is in that? <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30. What, what? Second Corinthians chapter 1. I mean first Corinthians, thank you Karen. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30. That's where your redemption is at. Where is redemption located at, J.D.? In Christ. 
Christ Jesus. That's the only place you can have redemption. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. Read, J.D. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us. Who from God. From God is made unto us. Made unto us. 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 Amen. Wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Now what redemptive act is in this, what he doing? <laughs> that is a lie, ain't it? Yes, it is. It is. That's what people don't want to say. That's human reason. That's human reason. We're looking the worst in a while. Uh, something redemptive in the midst of all this it, really tragedy and chaos. It was very redemptive, I thought. Uh, it really, um, like you said, it was the global day of prayer for, for the missing and the hostages. And uh, the two chief rabbis of Israel, Sephardic and Ashkenazi, were both... The two chief rabbis of Israel, Sephardic and Ashkenazi. That's what they're going to tell you. My rabbi said, I, I'm not trying to boast. I know what I'm talking about. Amen. I study. Those Jews are Ashkenazi, what? Sephardic, what? Jews. What they are. That's what type of Jews they are. They're not the Jews of the Bible, church. Amen. They're not. They're Ashkenazi. Seth Barney. They Jews. Don't you say they don't say they Israel, y'all? Don't you see they say they Jews? They Ashkenazi Sephardic Jews. Who they are. The Jews in the Bible don't walk around with no hat on and no black coat on, no yarmulke on their head and no curls all down. <laughs> Thank you, Candy. They ain't have no black hat on, no black boots on. Ain't they have no boots back then? <laughs> they was in the desert. <laughs> What is it? A hot ass from the curl of hell from? Hell but straight? Come on, help us, you see. Eric. Yeah. Missing and the hostages, and uh, the two chief rabbis of Israel, Sephardic and Ashkenazi, were both in for for the missing and the hostages, and uh, the two chief rabbis of Israel, Sephardic and Ashkenazi, the two chief rabbis of Israel, Sephardic and and uh, the two chief rabbis of Israel, Sephardic and keep for, for the missing and the hostages, and uh, the two chief rabbis of Israel, Sephardic and Ashkenazi, were both there. They were, and it was at the Eish HaTorah um, Yeshiva there, and they they were praying Psalms, and you had secular Israelis and religious Israelis, and everybody was really standing together, and it was very precious, very. And you had secular Israelis and religious Israelis and everything. Did you hear what she said? Secular and religious Israelis. Thank you. The secular Israelis and the religious I'm going to let it go right through and stop so you can understand. Now, you understand what I'm teaching you. It's like not the children of God. We're looking the worst in a while. And this is why the world is angry at them because they exalt themselves. Right, so right. you see it's anti-Semitism. They call it anti-Semitism and all it's the wrath of God upon them. Right. That's what it is. It's not anti-Semitism, it's the wrath of God upon the Jew. Mm -hmm. uh, something redemptive in the midst of all this really it, tragedy and chaos. It was very redemptive, I thought. Uh, it really, um, like you said, it was the global day of prayer for, for the missing and the hostages. And uh, the two chief rabbis of Israel, Sephardic and Ashkenazi, were both there. They were, and it was at the Eish HaTorah, mm -hmm. um, Yeshiva there, and they they were praying psalms, and you had secular Israelis and religious Israelis, and everybody was really standing together.
together. And it was very precious. Very This is what I'm explaining to you, church. This is what I want you to understand. This is who Jesus is talking about in the Bible. He is talking about them. Because they're still going according to the tradition of their fathers. Now, what did I tell you to go before I got that? Let's go back to Matthew 3. Let's go back to Matthew 3. And we go back to verse number 12. We go back to Matthew 3. As a matter of fact, Let's go, no, no, yeah, was at Matthew 3. We was at verse number 5. That's what we were. We was at Matthew 3. We was at verse number 5. No, we wasn't. No, we wasn't. We was at Matthew 2, verse number 23. It said, He came to pass, He dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. He fulfilled that, didn't He? That's what he just said in Matthew 5, 17. He come to fulfill the prophets, right? Amen. So in order for him to fulfill the prophets, he got to dwell in Nazareth to fulfill the prophets. Amen. Well, they didn't believe the prophets. Did they? No. They killed the prophets. That's what the Jew did. The Jew killed the prophets. Hello? Amen. That's what they did. They killed the prophets. Let's go to... Let me show you. Let's read. They killed the prophets. The Jew killed the prophets. Go to 2 Chronicles. Let's go to 2 Chronicles. Let's go to 2 Chronicles. Let's go to 2 Chronicles. We want 2 Chronicles. We want 2 Chronicles. We want 2 Chronicles. We want 2 Chronicles 36. We want 2 Chronicles. And we want 2 Chronicles 36. Amen. We want 2 Chronicles 36. Are we there? Amen. We want 2 Chronicles 36. 2 Chronicles 36 and verse 16. 2 Chronicles 36. And verse 15. Are we there? Amen. 2 Chronicles 36, verse 15. Are we there? Amen. And the Lord God, and the Lord God of their fathers, sent to them by his messengers, rising up betimes and sending, because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. What was his dwelling place, church? What was this? Be, be, I say, I don't know. Thank you, J.D. Everybody should know what his dwelling place was. But put it there because you didn't know. So write Jerusalem. Underline dwelling place and put Jerusalem. Underline dwelling place and put Jerusalem because you didn't know. I told you when you should be taking notes, you don't. When you shouldn't, you do. You underline his dwelling place. And right there, you got enough room. You can write Jerusalem. That's the place he chose to place his name, didn't he, J.D.? Amen. And they profaned that place then. Yes. He said, but they mocked the messengers of God and despised his words, misused his prophets, until the wrath of the Lord rose, arose against his people till there was no remedy. That is prophecy today. The wrath of God is upon this people and there is no remedy. No remedy. There is no remedy because they rejected the remedy. The, redemp the remedy was Jesus the Christ. So they rejected the remedy. There is no more remedy. Look at Nehemiah chapter 9 and verse 26. Look at Nehemiah chapter 9 and verse 26. Nehemiah chapter 9 and look at verse 26. Amen. Nehemiah chapter 9 verse number 26. It says, Nevertheless, they were disobedient, rebelled against thee. He talk, Nehemiah is talking specifically about the Jews. Nehemiah is talking about the Jews. 
Nevertheless, they were disobedient, rebelled against thee, cast thy law behind their backs. What law did they cast behind their backs? Law of the law of Moses. They kept the oral law, but the law of Moses, they cast that law behind their backs. Amen, amen. And slew and testified to turn them to you. And they brought great what? Provocations. Provocations. Now, at verse 26, it says, cast thy law behind their backs. Right? Yeah. That's what he's talking about over here in Psalms. Go to Psalms 50. Go to Psalms 50. Go to Psalms and go to Psalms 50. Go to Psalms 50. This wise no, they're gonna not gonna have no peace. What you want? No, 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 son. I, I don't want all that. No, I ain't going through that, son. You I ain't tell you to read that. You follow. <laughs> you remember the narrow those ministry for real. <laughs> so you follow with what I'm reading. That's what the problem be. That's how we get in trouble. You were supposed to be in 926. I'm, I'm teaching you. I'm teaching you. Cast thy law behind their backs. Mm -hmm. You looking at something else. So we're going, Rose, we're going to search out, cast that law behind their backs. Mm -hmm. So I told you go to Psalms 50. Yes. And we go to Psalms 50 and verse number 17. Amen. And in Psalms 50, verse number 17, it says, we'll start at verse number 16. But unto the wicked, God said, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes? Or that you shouldest take my covenant in your mouth, seeing that you hate his instruction and casted my words behind thee. He talking about the Jew. Castest my words behind thee, Rose, is the same as in Nehemiah 9, 26. Cast thy law behind their backs. That's what I be telling people how to read. Mm -hmm. So at 5017, you can put Psalms chapter, you can put Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 26. But you must indicate what, Rose? Cast my words behind. Thank you. You must indicate that. Not the whole psalm. You must indicate those words, not the whole sentence. Just those words that I showed you relate to that song. Do you understand, J.D.? Amen. Because many don't understand how the Bible works. That's how the Bible is written. So cast that law behind their backs and slew that prophets. Why did they slay the prophets? You stay right there in verse number 17 because they hated instruction. Because who gave them the instruction? The instruction came from the prophets. Amen. And many people don't know how to read. The instruction came from the prophet. That's where the instruction came from. In Psalms chapter 50, verse number 17, you hate his instruction. What did the instruction, who did the instruction come from? The instructions came from the prophets that they slew, but testified against them to turn them to God. So you can take Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 26. You can place it at 50 and 17 of Psalms. Take Psalms 50 and 17 and place it at Nehemiah chapter 9 and verse 26. And you underline, cast it thy law behind their backs. Over in Psalm 50, 17, you under cast it my words behind thee. Hello? Amen. It is the same thing. Now, this is what they did, Melvion. That's why the wrath of God is upon them. Because they hated the instruction that the prophets gave them. Let's go to 1 Kings 18. Let's go to 1 Kings 18. We're looking at them killing the prophets. Let's go to 1 Kings 18. 1 Kings chapter 18. Amen. And then as we read this, we can understand why they killed the prophets. Why did they kill the prophets? 
instruction. Thank you, Rose. Thank you. Everybody can be quiet. They hated instruction. I keep telling y'all that. All it takes is one scripture. It don't take no 15 scriptures for God to make a point, Rose. Verse number of uh, 1 Kings chapter 18. And I told you to go to verse number 4. It's talking about it came to pass in the third, when I look at verse number 1. I bet verse number 1. Amen. Excuse me. I'm at the wrong book. My fault. I was at 2 Kings. Let me get the 1 Kings. Let me get the 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 18. Verse number 1. Came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Who is Elijah? A prophet. In the third year saying, go show yourself unto Ahab and I will send rain upon the earth. Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab and there was a sore famine in Samaria. And Ahab called Obadiah, which was the governor of his house. Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly, for it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord. Then Obadiah took a hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave. So how many caves was it? Two. Two. And fed them with bread and what? Water. We go to verse number 13. We go to verse number 11. 1 Kings 18, 11. And now you say is, go tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here. It shall come to pass, this is Obadiah speaking, it shall come to pass as soon as I am gone from thee, that the Spirit of the Lord shall carry you whither I know not. And so when I come and tell Ahab, he cannot find thee. He shall slay me, but I thy servant fear the Lord from my youth. Well, do what he tell you to do. Amen. Stop fearing man. Amen. You fear the Lord, do what the Lord tells you to do, and don't we worry about the consequences. He said he feared the Lord from his youth, but he scared of man. Was it not told my Lord what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets? of the Lord, how I hid a hundred men of the Lord's prophets. About fifty in the cave. How many caves? Two caves. And fed them with bread and water. Now, let's go to let's go to Matthew chapter 5. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5. Amen. Verse number 12. This is the sermon to the elect. This is the sermon to the elect. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven. Blessed are ye. Verse 11. Blessed are, blessed are they which are persecuted for Christ's sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you, persecute you. And shall say all matter evil against you falsely for my sake, for my cause. Rejoice ye and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they. Who was they? The Jews. Thank you, Mama. The Jews. For persecuted they. They are the Jews. The prophets which were before you. Let's go to we have Matthew. Let's go to 23. Let's go to 23. Amen. Let's go to 23. Amen. And we want verse number 31. Amen. 23, 31. Amen. 23, 31. Are you there? Amen. 23, 31. He says, he's talking to, look at verse number 23. Woe unto you, scribes and what? Pharisees. Thank you. Verse 25, woe unto you who? Scribes and Pharisees. Verse 24, what are they? First, verse 24, what are they? Verse 26, what is he? Scribes and Pharisees. 
War unto you, verse 27. What are you? War unto you, scribes and Pharisees. What are they? Hypocrites. Thank you. Verse 29. War unto you, scribes and Pharisees. What are they? Hypocrites. It says, verse number uh, 30. War up, verse number 30, 29. Verse 29. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets, and you garnish the sepulchres of the righteous, and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood or the killing because that's what it means when it said blood. Of the what? Prophets. He said, wherefore you be witnesses unto yourselves that you are children of them which kill the prophets. You laughing, J.D., and snickering. Why are you snickering, J.D.? Because they did as their prophets did. No. I thought you knew. What caused them to be the witnesses? What made them witnesses? Say, I don't know. I don't know. Because you build the tombs of the prophets that garnish the sepulchres of mm. the righteous. You keep their work alive. Mm. Yeah. When you keep it in your, somebody's work alive, you show your support for it. Yes. You best believe it. They show their support for it. They say, but this is what they say. Yes. If we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them. You knuckle in. They're so stupid. Mm -hmm. Up under the power of human reason, what manifest that they was partakers with them? Thank you, bro. The, 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 they built the tombs of the prophets and they garnished the sepulchres of the righteous. That was the, that was the evidence. That they were part, don't you see it say partakers? Don't you see it say partakers? It say we would not have been partakers. You partaking when you do what? Read the scripture. You're partakers when you do what? You're partakers when you do what? Thank you. Amen. You partaking when you do what? Thank you. If they weren't taking no part of them, they wouldn't have put their hands up. I told you, that carnal man, that human reason, that English man, it's hard to understand things like that. Yes, it do. Amen. You get you get water baptized, that means you partaking of the tradition of your fathers. You because your mom and them told you to get water baptized, yeah. you get water baptized. That means you partake in it. Or that tradition. Amen. But the Bible don't teach no water baptism, nor do it teach no running up and down the wild speaking in those so-called tongues. And when you do it, you partake in it. So you can't say, if we was back there, we wouldn't have did it. He said, you're a liar. You would have did it. He said, you're a hypocrite because you build the tombs of the prophets and you garnish the sepulchres of the righteous and saved. You're liars. And say, he said, you build the tombs of the prophets, you garnish the sepulchres of the righteous, and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them. You just partook when you built the tombs. You built the tombs, you just partook. You garnish the sepulchres. Say, wherefore you be witnesses unto yourselves. You witness unto yourselves. You're so dumb and stupid. You think you're doing a righteous work. Why did they do that? Judaism told them that. Judaism told them that. You don't find that in the scripture. You don't find what they did in the scripture. Judaism told them to build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous. Judaism told them that. What? I was worshiping the dead, huh? Oh, there goes my son. Somebody understands. Uh -huh. Good God Almighty. Well, I got one. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. My labor ain't in vain. They was worshiping the dead. That's and they hated the prophets. We just read they killed them. 
That's they why, hated the prophets. That's why the, when uh, he was up, when Jesus was up there and Moses had came down and the, um, I forgot who else. Elijah. Elijah came uh -huh. down. That's why he told him, hear the son. That's right. Him. Tombs, don't do that. That's right. Hear ye him. That's why he told him that in Matthew chapter yeah. 17 when Elijah and Moses appeared with him. Because yeah. Peter and them was taught to worship the prophets. Yeah. And he said, well, good Lord, that we be here, we can build three tabernacles. One for Moses, one for Elijah, and one for you. <laughs> the voice came from him and said, this is my beloved son who I real well please hear ye him. What Moses and Elijah say is irrelevant now. My boy here. Amen. My boy is here. What they said is irrelevant. I told him to tell them. Mm -hmm. and that's what they're still listening to. They're looking for Elijah and they're waiting for Moses to come. But they say Elijah and Moses are supposed to come before the great day of the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's what they teach. And they're waiting for Moses and Elijah to come. And I'm trying to find out Caleb's how they gonna recognize them and they ain't never seen them before? <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, See, you don't think like that. They didn't think, how you gonna recognize them? You ain't never seen them before. You dumbbells. <laughs> Just because he showed up and said, I'm Elijah. <laughs> My name is I'm Moses. Yeah. You ain't never seen them before. I can break and run, man. You dumb. Hey. See, that's the idle word they're gonna give an account for. Mm -hmm. See, you're gonna give an account for everything you say. Every idle word that you speak, that's they're gonna give an account for that. Y'all got to understand what he said. He said, "Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous, mm -hmm. and then you say." Then you say, Rose, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with you. You just partook. You just took part with them when you built the tombs that garnished the sepulchers. You just participated. That's why I be telling y'all no words, man, to watch the scripture. Oh. He said, but you are witnesses unto yourselves that you are the children. Of them which killed the prophets, fill up then the measure of your fathers. Kill me. That's what he just said. He said, fill up the measure of your fathers. And then he called them oh, yeah. serpents and a generation of vipers. How can you escape the damnation of hell when you reject me? How can you? How can you escape the damnation of hell? You finna kill me. Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets. They imagine what? That was him who was sent Elijah. That was him who sent Isaiah. I send unto you prophets. I'm gonna send some wise men too. And I'm gonna send some scribes too. He said, some of them you shall kill and crucify. Some of them shall you scourge in your synagogues, in your church, and persecute them from city to city. That upon you, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth. Whoso shed man's blood by man. He went out with Rome. Genesis chapter yes. 9. He went all the way back to Genesis chapter 9. He went all the way back to Genesis chapter 9. Chapter 9, verse number 6. Is it right? Mm -hmm. What it say? Whosoever, whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. You can come right back over here, put shed upon the earth, blood shed upon the earth, and you can put Genesis 9, 6, right there by 35. Amen. He went all the way back to Genesis, before the law, J.D. Yeah. J.D. Singleton. Mm -hmm. He went all the way back before the law of Moses was given, J.D. Singleton. <laughs> <laughs> he went back to Genesis 9 and 6. Look what he said. That's why I try to get people to understand what Jesus said. 
Jesus said, that upon you may come. Is it going to happen? Yes, it is. Is it happening right now? Yes, it is. Yes, it's happening. Yes, it is. He hit the Jew, didn't he? This is what I see in the last, in these last two months, in, 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 in one month. Because this happened before the, uh, the first. He hit the Jew because they was down there in Israel Park in one day. And then he shot up about 15 on the west side, them Israelites that was over there partying too. Because everybody is surfing, they're getting drunk. Overindulges in flesh. Nobody's paying attention to what's going on. No word of God is being preached. Everybody is living for themselves. So he shot up a bunch of them so-called black Israelites on the west side over there. Fifteen of them. And then he got them Israelis, them Jews, over there in Israel. That's what I see. That's what I see. I don't know what nobody else I see. And they say it's a shame. That a tragic incident like that happened where a man shoots 15 people and it doesn't even make the front page news because of what's going on in Israel. Mm. Then you had the man down in Maine, the Gentile, didn't you? Mm. He shot him up, didn't you? That's what I see. I see the Jew, I see the so called black Israel. And I see that Gentile that don't reject the Messiah. The wrath of God is up on them. We don't agree with none of them. Best believe it. That upon you may come all. I, I like this right here. That upon man. Jesus said this. I don't care what no man say. I don't care what no rabbi. No Ashkenazi. Sephardic rabbi say. I don't care what no rabbi say. I don't care what no rabbi say. Amen. Amen. He said, call no man rabbi. All rabbis going to hell. All rabbis are going to hell. Amen. You ain't never got no office of rabbi. You go over to the book of the, you go over to the book of Ephesians and show me rabbi. Mm -hmm. Show me where he gave a gift for rabbi. Turn your Bible to Ephesians chapter 4 verse number 11 and show me a rabbi. There ain't no rabbi over there. God help us in the name of Jesus. What's wrong with the jack leg preacher in the pulpit? He's scared to tell that Jew he's going to hell. Yes, he is. He a serpent and a viper. The rabbi is from a generation of vipers, isn't he? Yes. Now, do you see a rabbi in 411? No, you don't. Read. Mm -hmm. And he gave some apostles. He gave some what? Apostles. Uh-huh. And some prophets. Uh-huh. And some evangelists. Uh-huh. And some pastors. Uh-huh. And teachers. Well, ain't no rabbi in there. Ain't no rabbi in there. You don't see no he gave no rabbi. He didn't say he gave no rabbi. I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't either. He ain't my brother. He never did the will of my father. See no rabbi there. They get you killed, Cole. They get you killed, child. Just get you killed. You sure you want to stay here? But this get you killed. Nobody say y'all got to get away from dinner. He gonna get people killed. They gonna get you killed. They gonna get you killed. Holy Spirit gets you killed if you for righteousness sake. Amen. It's worthy to die. Look what he says. That upon you may come. That's what I tell him. That upon you may come. They better repent. If God will grant to repent, upon them going to come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth. Right? All the righteous blood shed. Who shed the blood upon earth? The Jew. All the right. He killed the prophets. His, father, his fathers killed them. Jesus said it. He killed the prophets. He said, you are children of them which killed the prophets. That upon you may come out the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel. Hello? That was before the law. At Genesis chapter 4, Abel was a prophet. That's Genesis chapter 4. 
from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom ye slew. Look, he say, whom ye slew. He say, they did it. He say, they did it, because they got the same human nature that they died, daddy got. Say, you did it. You feel like your daddy now. That's what he said. You slew. He said, you slew. Y E. You slew between the temple and the altar. Verily, I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. It did. O Jerusalem, O Jerusalem, you that do what y'all do, and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathered her chicks under the waves, and you would not. I ain't through. I'm going to teach on you would not. You're going to look at what not. You kill us, the prophets. You're going to look at what not. You killed them. Yeah, you did. Look at verse, oh, we did that. Look at Acts chapter 7, verse 52. They killed the prophet. You did it. You chew. Talk to me, church. Yeah. You did it. You did it. Jesus said you did it. Acts 7, 52. Amen. Acts chapter 7, verse 51. Are you there? Amen. He said, you stiff neck and you stiff neck and uncircumcised. <laughs> you stiff neck and uncircumcised and hard in ears. Because they did not hear him, right? Amen. So you stiff neck and uncircumcised and hard in ears. You do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the what? Yeah. Of whom you have been now the betrayers and what? Murder. You betrayed him and you murdered him, you Jew, you. Hello? Amen. Look at Acts 3.15. Acts chapter 3. Verse number 15, Amen. it says, verse number 12, are you there, Rose? Yes. It said, and when Peter saw it, he answered and said unto the people, you men of what? Yes. Yes. Why marvel ye at this? So why look ye so seriously on us as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? The God of Abraham and Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, have glorified his son, Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when Pilate was determined to let God's son, Jesus, go. You denied the Holy One and the just, and you desired a murderer to be granted to you, you kill the prince of life, whom God have raised from the dead, of which we are witnesses, because we seen him. You did. You chew you. Look at that. Uh, uh, Verse number, no, we we'll do it, that I ain't reading all that. Look at four, did we do 14? No. Chapter 4, no. verse number 10. Amen. Chapter 4, verse number 10, we didn't do that? No. Look at 14. It said, be it known unto you, be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ the Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, that is by him doeth this man stand here before you hold. This is the stone, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men, whereby we what? Must be saved. And I like the next verse. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. Some people call that arrogance. Mm -hmm. The boldness. Look at 530. Mm -hmm. Look at verse number 29. Yeah. Amen. 
Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than the Amen. rabbis. Amen. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hanged on a tree. Him have God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a watch all Savior. For to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of what? Sin. And we are his what? Witness. Of these things. So is also the Holy Ghost whom God has given to them that do what? Obey him. Thank you very much. No obedience. Preach. I think you got it. No, you don't. You got some historical facts. That's all you got. Look at John. Look at chapter 12. No, no, no. Same book. Why well, want that? What do I got? I got 12. Yeah. Verse number one. Are you there? Amen. Now about the now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the what? And he killed James, the brother of John, with the what? Look at first Kings chapter 19. First Kings 19. First Kings 19. And verse number 10. First Kings 19. Are you there? Amen. And verse number 10. And he said, Elijah. Verse number 9. The end of verse number 9. What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and slain with the sword, and I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to do what? Take it away. Verse number 14. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword, and I, even I, only, am left, and they seek my life to do what? Take it away. The second Chronicles chapter 24. This is why the Jew was suffering. Second Chronicles 24. Second Chronicles chapter 24. Amen. We're going to be dealing with this for a while, Amen. church, so we can know where we're at in time. Second Chronicles 24. Y'all want to know what's happening? I'm showing you what's happening. This is why this is happening over in Israel. Second Chronicles 24. We want verse number 19. Second Chronicles Amen. 24, verse number 19. Amen. Yet he sent prophets to them to bring them again unto the Lord. And they testified against them. But they would not do what? Give ear. They would not give ear. Amen. He's talking to Judah. He's talking to the Jews, y'all. And the Spirit of God came upon Zechariah, the son of Joadah. Joy ate Ada, the priest was stood above the people and said unto them, Thus said God, Why transgress ye the commandments of the Lord that you cannot prosper? Because you have forsaken the Lord. Talk to me, church. He have also forsaken you. And they conspired against him and stoned him with stones at the commandment of the king in the court of the house of the Lord. Thus Joash the king, remember not the kindness which Jehoi Ada, his father, had done to him, but slew his son. And when he died, he said, The Lord look upon and require it. Look at Jeremiah chapter 2. Jeremiah chapter 2. Jeremiah 2. Amen. Jeremiah 2. Jeremiah chapter 2. Verse number 30. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse number 30. I've been trying to read these for a long time. God, found, God say, now is the time. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse number 30. 30. Amen. Amen. In vain have I smitten your children. They receive not what? No correction. They receive no correction. Your own sword have devoured your prophets like a like a destroying lion. Look at verse number, look at chapter 5, verse number 30. 
chapter 5, verse number 30. Amen. He said, a wonderful, he said, a wonderful and a horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy what? Oh, and the priests bear rule by what? Yeah. Those are your rabbis. And my people love to what? Yes. And what will you do? Talk back with me. Amen. What you going to do? In the what? Amen. Income. We're going to go through the false prophets too. Look at, I, look at Isaiah 115. Look at Isaiah 115. Isaiah 115. Amen. This is prophecy, y'all. Amen. And this is still happening. Look at Jeremiah 115. Look at Isaiah 115. Amen. I mean 15, my fault. Jeremiah, I mean Isaiah, 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 Isaiah boy. Isaiah 1-5. Amen. Amen. Let me look at verse 4. Amen. All sinful nations. A people laden with what? A seed of what? Evil. He called them a what? He called them a seed of evil doers. What did he call them? A generation of vipers. He called them a generation of vipers. They are a seed of evil doers. All sinful nation. A people loaded with what? A seed of what? Evil. Children that are what? Correct. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away what? Backwards. Why should you be stricken anymore? Still striking a man. Yeah. Still striking a man. Why should you be stricken anymore? Look what he say. The more I strike you, the more you rebel. You, re you will revolt more and more. The more I strike you, the more you rebel. The whole head is what y'all say. And the whole heart is what? Amen. From the sole of the foot even unto the head. There is no soundness in the body. This is a picture of you too. But wounds, bruised, putrefying sores that have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Your country is what? Yes, yes, Cities are burned with what? Fire. Your land, strangers, devouring your what? Yes. And, it, and it is desolate. It's overthrown by what? Amen. God have mercy on you. Look at Jeremiah 26 and 15. Jeremiah 26 and 15. Jeremiah 26 and 15. They think it's going to be peace? No, sir. Southern destruction. Let's believe it. When they say peace and safety, sudden destruction. Sudden destruction. Look at verse number. Look at verse number 14. Look at verse number 13. Look at verse number 12. Then the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah, the prophet. Then the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah, the prophet, after that. Hananiah, the prophet had broken the yoke. He said Jeremiah, 20. Jeremiah, I'm sorry, my fault. Jeremiah 28. 28. My fault. 28. I said 2615 yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Wait a minute. Go over there. Stay put. Go to 2615. I said 2615, right? Yeah. 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 Look at verse 12. Yeah. Then spake Jeremiah unto all the princes and to all the people, saying, The Lord sent me to prophesy against the house. Hello? Mm -hmm. What the Lord sent to prophesy? He sent all the prophets to do what? Prophesy. Prophesy against. Prophesy against. Never in favor of. Never. Yes. He never sent a prophet to prophesy in favor of. Never. Did y'all hear what I said? Yes, I did. Verse number 11. Look at verse number 10. You understand what I'm saying, Jeremiah? These people don't get it, man. Look at verse number 7. These people 
People don't get it, JD. People don't get it, man. They don't get it. Verse number seven. So the priests and the prophets and all the people heard Jeremiah speaking these words in the house of the Lord. Now it came to pass when Jeremiah had made an end of speaking all that the Lord had commanded him to speak unto all the people. That the priests and prophets of Judah, just like they did Jesus, and all the people, same thing Jeremiah, took him saying, you shall surely die. Why have you prophesied in the name of the Lord, saying, This house shall be like shallow, and this city shall be desolate without an inhabitant. He's going all the way back to 1 Samuel, speaking of when God destroyed the house of God, it was first in shallow. Anybody remember besides Charles? Huh? Anybody remember besides Charles? Yes. Who? Yes. Who, Jenny? I have written here. Who? Verse Who? I said who? Who was? I don't understand the question. Who was the people? Who was the people that was running the house of Shiloh in first Samuel? No, I don't remember. Samuel and his two sons. Eli. I mean, yeah, Eli and his two sons. How, uh, uh, Hophni and Phineas. Yes. Remember they was having <laughs> heaven at the door of the tabernacle yes. with the woman they were stealing God's sacrifice. Eli with his fat self was eating yes. it up. Yes. That's shallow. That's what that that is the first place where the house of the Lord was. Shallow. That's why he say go back to shallow. What you got, Jay? First Samuel what? First Samuel four. That's right. First Samuel chapter four. So you can underline Shiloh and put 1 Samuel chapter 4. I think it's in the Oh, it is. 1 Samuel 14. Yeah, 1 Samuel 14. Good. 14 and 11. Thank you, Mama Rhonda. It says, so you go back and read that. Why has thou prophesied unto the name of the Lord, saying, This house shall be like Shiloh, and this city shall be desolate without an inhabitant? That's what Jeremiah told him. All the people were gathered together against Jeremiah in the house. Of the Lord. Everybody was against the preacher. Because he prophesied against it. It's just like this. When I prophesy against you, all of you come together. I keep telling the Bible ain't got no, no good to say about now one of us. And then people get angry. The Bible ain't got nothing good to say about nobody. It's against human reason. All the people were gathered against Jeremiah. All of them. In the church. That's how I know I preach the truth. Because Jeremiah, wait, 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 wait. Jeremiah was prophesying with what? Preach! <laughs> it don't change, do it. It don't change. Jeremiah was prophesying with what, Charles? Much contention. much contention. It don't change. If there ain't no much contention, ain't no preaching. Ain't no prophesying. That's why I don't understand why people want to argue with me and tell me, well, that don't mean that over there. That don't mean that over there. It does mean it. You don't understand it. You need to pray to God, purge your conscience with the blood and sprinkle your heart from evil conscience. You better pray for some conviction so you can repent. Because if you don't pray and get no, uh, no conviction, repent, you die like that, you may go to hell. People don't understand. Van and Mama Rhonda asked me, said, Preacher, can you blaspheme against the scriptures? I said, yes, you can. And I went home yesterday and read it. You speak evil against the scripture, you is blaspheming against the Holy Spirit because all scripture is given by inspiration of God. You blaspheme Amen. against the Holy Spirit when you speak evil against the scripture and interpretation and explanation that the preacher gives. That's blasphemy. Amen. I'm around the van actually, I'm going to read it to you. I went home and I was doing my study and I read it. 
And I pray, Lord, please don't ever let me pervert a scripture. Please don't ever let me pervert a scripture or give a wrong interpretation explanation. That's blasphemy. When I preach and say, and preach, if, a, if a preacher's preaching and he don't have much contention, he ain't a preacher of God. Amen. And there goes scripture right there, right there in the Old Testament to prove it. And say the whole house was against Jeremiah. Oh. Everybody in the church was against him. Verse number nine say, Why have you prophesied in the name of the Lord? Saying, This house shall be like Shiloh, this city shall be desolate without an inhabitant. And all the people were gathered together, gathered against Jeremiah, the house of the Lord. When the rulers of Judah, did I tell you them Jews? Judah, when the rulers of Judah heard these things, then they came up from the king's house into the house of the Lord, sat down in the entry of the new gate of the Lord's house. Then spake the priests and the prophets unto the princes of Judah, to all the people, saying, This man is worthy to die. It's no different than what they did to Jesus I know it. It's no different. He said, fill up the measure. You see the same thing in the Old Testament, just like the chief priests and the scribes did to the people. You should see it today then, shouldn't you? Yes. Because no God don't change. You should see the same thing going on with the preacher today, shouldn't you? Yes. It went on with the prophets. It happened to Jesus. It happened to the apostles. It should be happening to the preacher today, shouldn't it? Yes. If it's not, he ain't a preacher. Amen. Amen. Told you God don't change. Amen. He ain't a preacher. Amen. Then spake the priests and the prophets unto the princes and to all the people saying, This man, what they call Jesus. This yes. man. Best believe they call Jesus this man. What they call me, that man. Amen. This man is worthy to die. For he have preached against this city, as you have heard with your own ears. Did they say this about Jesus? Mm -hmm. Yes, they say, you have heard him. He has blasphemed. Then spake Jeremiah to all the princes and to all the people, saying, The Lord sent me to prophesy against this house, against this city, all the words that you have heard. Therefore now, amend your ways and your doings. Obey the voice of the Lord your God. Obey who? Preach! Amen. Mm -hmm. And the Lord will repent him of the evil that he had pronounced against you out of the mouth of who? As for me, behold, I am in your hand. Do with me as seemeth good and me unto you. But know ye for certain that if you put me to death, you shall surely bring innocent blood upon yourselves, upon this city, upon the inhabitants thereof. For of a truth, the Lord hath sent me unto you to speak all these words in your ear. Then said the princes and all the people unto the priests and to the prophets, this man is not worthy to die. <laughs> this man is not worthy to die. For he has spoken to us in the name of the Lord. What? Let's believe the Father. We thank you for your word leading God.